Right, today I'm in an interesting place. It's um, actually a stable. Look at this guy. Hey, what a good looking horse. Let's get down to the you know matter at hand. What I'm going to be doing today is comparing the Sony ZV-E1 to the GoPro Hero 12 and the DJI Action 4, which I'm filming on right now. And we're going to see what kind of difference in quality when it comes to this guy look at this guy hello whoa that is a unique looking horse the difference in quality when it comes to photos a lot of people haven't touched on the photos obviously this is um 12 megapixels it's not a lot but it does the job for our fashion shoot the action 4 is also around 12 and the gopro hero 12 has the most when it comes to megapixels so it should be the best right yeah, that's not always the um, the deal right there. So I'm not going to talk much. I'm going to take a whole load of photos, put them on the screen, and um, show you what this looks like on a fashion shoot. So these are the photos I took yesterday on the fashion shoot. On the left, we have the Sony ZV-E1. In the middle, the DJI Osmo Action 4. And on the right, the GoPro Hero 12. They're all on auto white balance and you can see that there is a humongous difference between all of these cameras including the Action 4 and the Hero 12. The Sony ZV-1 obviously does the best job and it has the advantage of a full frame sensor and I am using a 40mm lens on it. So I tried to get a similar shot on the Action 4 and the Hero 12 and at the end of these photos you're going to see me zoom in to 100% and see exactly what they look like next to each other. Now, the distortion is pretty bad on the Action 4 and definitely on the Hero 12, but I actually did correct both of these in Lightroom, so they're way better than they were to begin with. As you can see, the Sony ZV-1 shines incredibly well compared to the other two. You can, in a pinch use the Action 4 and Hero 12 for photos of people, but it's not something I would probably buy it for. That's what the Sony ZV-1 or a different mirrorless camera is for. If we take a closer look in Lightroom and do some pixel peeping, on the left we're going to have the Sony ZV-E1. On the right we have the DJI Osmo Action 4, and as you can see, there is absolutely no detail in the shot. The GoPro, however, is extremely oversharpened and it becomes very, very ugly fast. In terms of backlighting, both the GoPro and the Action Hero 4 do an incredibly bad job. The Sony ZV-1, well, it's, it's, it's made to take photos like this, right? The GoPro and the DJI are action cameras. They're not made to take photos like this. And if I get really close in, you can see there is really very little detail in the skin, the pores, the eyes. It is very oversharpened and has quite a bad look to it. Now, our model, Ola, she was absolutely fantastic and she's got incredible, incredible skin. So I was lucky that there is absolutely no Photoshop on these photos. But yeah, both the GoPro and the Action 4 are not recommended for fashion shoots. I can tell you that now. This is the setup I had taking those photos. It is the Sony ZV-E1 with a 40mm Sony G lens, which is a fantastic, fantastic small little pancake lens, as you can see. I wouldn't use an Action 4 or a GoPro Hero 12 for a fashion shoot, but I thought it'd be interesting to show you guys what they look like when it comes to photos, when it comes to the resolution, when it comes to the actual over sharpening the quality of the image. It is nothing compared to a camera like this. I've been a fashion photographer and a portrait photographer for a long time and um, yeah it was really interesting to see just on one of my fashion shoots how these would all look like next to each other. I know all the shots weren't perfect one for one like the horse ran away and it was difficult because the model was really, really cold towards the end of it. But um, yeah, you can see that, that there is a massive difference. It's not about megapixels. It's not about 
any of that jazz. It is literally about very good lenses. It's about large sensors. It's about a camera that's made for the job, the right tool for the job. Any questions, comments down below. If you did like my film and it helped you choose one of these cameras, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and you know, ring the bell. That'll help. Catch you guys on the next one.